episode 312. I'm here with Todd Smith. And What's good? I just want to say thank you for being a guest on my talk show. <laughs> hey, man. Thanks for having me, Keith. I really appreciate this. No, uh, absolutely. The honor is all mine. Now, for people who don't want to know or or who do know or don't know, is you have your own podcast, and I'm not going to do the whole speech thing. We're just going to jump right into it because everyone heard it for the past 300 episodes, so why not do something different? So, exactly. You have a big fan following, so a lot of people may know or don't know, but you are a podcaster yourself. And start, yes, sir. And starting off, what can you tell us about yourself, and how did all that come about? Sure. Um, first off, let me start off by saying, Keith, you actually have more of a following than we do. Just eh. to make that clear. I want to uh, go check that out far. the channel. You got more subscribers than we do, and you got Angelina Love on your show, so you got one up on us already, man. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Uh, if you, and that's uh, one of the things I promote. Is mm -hmm. so whatever, and she can do a promo for you, for that matter, or a recommendation. Basically, you go to celebrityvm.com. And okay. most of them pay like, I don't know, I think Velvet went up to $30. Malena okay. is still 25 But each of them have their own fee. So you pay the fee, you introduce yourself, and you mm -hmm. say, hey, can I have a shout? And I'm on there too. So if anyone wants a recommendation from me, they be like, hey, Keith, today's my birthday. Can you give me a shout out? We cool. like how you do impressions. Anything. And then that celebrity will do a video for you. I'm okay. still working on meeting Angel, 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 <laughs> I can't even talk, Ms. Love in person. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have, you know, you know, Malena, I met when she came to Middletown, New York. I, I met her. I met um, Ashley. I met Velvet Sky. So when I saw them on Celeb VM, they mm -hmm. already knew who I was. Cool. So, but, you know, like Angel Love, Christopher Daniels, mm -hmm. um, a good friend of mine, Justin Credible, who I had on the show. You know, cool. I basically paid, you know, the fee to introduce myself to them, tell them what the show was about, said I would like to have them as a guest on my show, and mm -hmm. said basically whatever, you know, like... I'm still waiting on, um, well, Brooke said yes, but now she's in TNA, so we're going to mm -hmm. play on Brooke the Adams, right? You mean? Yes, Miss Tex, uh, Miss Tessmacher. Okay. Big fan of hers. <laughs> she's a sweet <laughs> person. She gave yeah. me a, a shout out, and we're definitely going to work on an interview. Um, the girl Rosa from TNA, you know, she liked what I was doing. She gave me a shout out, and we're working on it. Um, Jade, you know, um, I don't know if you knew, but Jade actually has a uh, learning disability. She told me that when she did her promo for me. And okay. So we have a common interest. So basically, okay. it's just you use Celebrity VM to interact with WWE, TNA, Breaking Bad, House of Cards, Grimm, any famous celebrities out there, you pay a fee, and as mm -hmm. long as you're respectful, they will do a video for you. Definitely. Definitely, And man. the same for me. I'm on there as well. I only charge $20. Cool. Very cool. Thanks, man. I appreciate that piece of advice. We're definitely going to put that to use. No, absolutely. Now, what I was doing a little research about your show, but I'd like to hear from you. You know, who influenced you to start your show? And how did all that come about? Okay, so let's start here going back, you know, way back to about 1986. Um, I'm 37 years old. My name is Todd Smith. And that's how long I've been watching professional wrestling for. And I used to watch NWA Jim Crockett promotions with my granddad way back in the day. And I was just so intrigued by, like, what I saw from guys like the Road Warriors, um, the Midnight Express, the Four Horsemen, you know, the Russians and all those guys. I remember saying, this is what I want to do when I grow up. I actually want to become a professional wrestler. I had no idea as to what it entailed back then. Of course, you know, I thought it was all 100% real as well, too. So, you know, over time, I continued to watch. I became more of a fan. 
And by about the time I turned, let's see, I think it was about 20, 21 years old, I pursued it. And I actually started training to become a professional wrestler. And I worked on the, uh, the indie scene out there in Northern California and um, out there in Northern Nevada. Over the course of about 10 years, I kind of did it off and on. You know, I didn't really take it 100% serious. But it wasn't until I'd say maybe around like 2009 or so, I actually started training weekly. Um, I actually developed a persona and I was known as the hired gun. So I kind of was like a cross between, let's see how I can mismatch this up here. I was kind of a cross between like Cowboy Curtis from uh, Pee Wee's Playhouse and The Undertaker. That's pretty <laughs> interesting. Yeah, so uh, basically, yeah, like African-American version of The Undertaker, you know, from the old Western days, you know, like wearing the hat and the duster and, you know, and all that stuff in the deep, you know, Western kind of Southwestern draw there. And I did that for about maybe about a good year or so, and I kind of suffered some injuries had some very good experiences in the pro wrestling business, but also some bad ones as well. And I pretty much decided, I said, you know what? This is not for me. This is not something that I want to do full time. So I started focusing on my television career um, a lot more intently. And I actually was lucky enough to get hired by ESPN. So I moved from out there in uh, northern Nevada out to the to the northeast and um, made some connections, you know, um, gained some resources along the way. And my good friend, Dale Clifford, who's my co-host, who I trained with out there in Nevada for a while, I was just like, hey, man, I have this crazy idea. I said, you know what? We should start a show dedicated to professional wrestling. You know, like not a TV show, but kind of like something online. And we, you know, also had a third, a third person with us, a guy by the name of Joe Mayerski. Um, we decided to name it From Bell to Bell. That was the original name of our podcast. And then we did, like I think, a podcast or two under that name. And then we came to the realization that someone else already had that name. Yeah. So we ran through about probably about a thousand different names, literally before we finally came up with the no gimmicks podcast. Um, you know, we started recording weekly. Usually it was on Sunday nights and we would do it like right after the pay-per-views would take place. But we figured we weren't polished enough to actually do it live, you know, and put it straight online. So what we would do is we would edit it. We would edit the hell out of it, and then we would actually turn around and release it on Monday. And our goal was always to try to release it before Monday Night Raw, since Monday Night Raw sets off the wrestling week. And here we are, I think, at this point, I believe we're about 52 episodes in. We have recorded a new episode every single week um, since, I believe, it was May of last year. And we don't plan on stopping anytime soon. Um, you know, we just put out our Royal Rumble episode um, today, actually, and then we released um, our NST Takeover recap on Saturday night. We have an interview coming up later this week with one of the former uh, wrestlers that I used to train with, a guy by the name of uh, Zach Reed, Mr. Primetime from out there in Pro Championship Wrestling. Um, we'll also be doing our, um, we'll see here, our top matches of January coming up later this week. So, yeah, you know, we're almost about a year in. I think we hit our 130th subscriber today so that's a good you know little victory for us you know we've got um several minutes of watch time that we've logged so far but our goal is is just to continue to make this thing grow man and hit you know as many people as we can and try to get as many people interested in our podcast so i can't say it enough thanks again for having us on here um to kind of help get the word out and be able to kind of you know learn some some more about you as well keith no, absolutely. This is your time, after all. Was there anything you wanted to promote? Anything you wanted to talk about? Well, I think I've talked enough about myself. I mean, if you want to give me a chance here to just kind of um, throw out, you know, some information. If you're interested in subscribing to us, please reach out to us at www.youtube.com forward slash the No Gimmicks Podcast. That is our official YouTube channel address. You can like us on Facebook. We actually have a Facebook page. I also, after three years of obscurity and uh, dwelling in non-social media land, I actually venture back to, to Facebook. So I actually have my own profile on there. So feel free to add me. I don't discuss work stuff. I don't discuss politics. I don't discuss religion. The only thing I talk about in there is professional wrestling. So the motto kind of has become, you know, no gimmicks, no image, all wrestling all the time. Um, so feel free to reach out to us on any of those. Also, I'm on LinkedIn. Usually when, um, when we release the new episodes, I put those out on Monday afternoons on my uh, personal LinkedIn account. But also we have a buddy of ours who we consider our six-man tag partner by the name of Craig Perkins, who's a pretty avid professional wrestling fan. He actually writes a weekly article on ProWrestling.com. 
Um, it depends upon what the subject matter is. He changes the title weekly. So his most recent article is actually about the Royal Rumble, which just took place this past weekend. But yeah, please feel, feel free to reach out to us. Like I said, we're always looking for subscribers and we like to have our content shared. So we always use the motto sharing is caring. So feel free to share it with other professional wrestling fans and friends and family who you feel might be um, interested in checking this out. No, absolutely. We're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, I'm going to ask you some hard-hitting subjects. Cool. Sounds good, Keith. A message for yourself or as a gift for someone else. For personal connections, shout-outs, birthdays, proposals, weddings, and much more. Enter your details about yourself so the celebrity can record a personal video message especially for you, including details such as your name, age, birthday, hobbies, or whatever else you include. As soon as the video has been recorded, you'll get an email with your link so you can share it on social media or download and keep it. Celebrities record videos as and when they can, usually within two weeks. But if you want a video for a specific date and it does not look like it will arrive in time, you can cancel it and get an instant refund at the click of a button. There are hundreds of celebrities to choose from and many more joining every day. Search by category or genre, buy a gift voucher, get updates and offers, and encourage your favorite celebrities to join so they can connect with fans in a fun and unique way, raise money for their charities, and much more. So order your video now for yourself or for someone else. I'm so boring. Yeah! Wanna see something really cool? Yeah! Now you'll never be bored again with Loot Crate, a totally bodacious mystery box packed with awesome toys, radical games, and other surprises. And the best part is, you can get Loot Crate delivered right to your door. So don't delay. Ask your parents and order today. Everything okay in there? Yeah! Everything great. <laughs> I love Liz Great. Alright, now we're back. And my name is Keith Andrew, and we're here with Todd, Mr. Smith, Todd Smith, Mr. Smith, whatever you want to go by. And we're here with episode 312. Now we left off as you were hinting towards the Royal Rumble. What mm -hmm. is your honest opinion on the main event? Do you think it was a big, big piece of shit? Or do you think it was just predetermined? And let me know, I'll explain how it's predetermined. Uh -huh. The fact, thank God Roman Reigns did not win. Or he, I would stop watch wrestling. Not Preach! A, he has no personality. <laughs> no, no, he doesn't, man. He doesn't. Um, I'm leaning more towards the, the opinion that you said for the actual Rumble match itself. Yeah. On the no gimmick scale, I actually was pretty generous. And I've been a lot more generous as of late with my uh, WWE, you know, pay-per-view recap reviews. I gave it a three out of five on the no gimmick scale. I thought the show overall was decent, but the Royal Rumble was a joke. Um, yeah. It was a big disappointment just about in every way possible. Um, when we did our predictions episode from about a week or so ago, we had some pretty cool ideas and some pretty fun ideas. None of those came to be. One of us predicted that Jericho would win and then go on to feud with Owens over the title. The other predicted um, that Samoa Joe would debut and that he would go on to face uh, John Cena at WrestleMania. And then mine was probably the most far-fetched was that Finn Balor would return as a heel and that you know somehow Gallows and Anderson, if they would not have went on to win the uh, Raw Tag Titles, they would get traded over to SmackDown, and then we finally get to see the uh, formation of the Balor Club on the SmackDown brand by Finn taking over, you know, and kind of winning the title from AJ Styles. But that just got blown completely apart, you know, by what happened last night by Gallows and Anderson winning the titles and John Cena defeating AJ. Um, yeah, I, I did not really care for it much at all. I'm 100% agreeing with you, thank God, that uh, Roman Reigns did not win. Um, I'm not really, I'm kind of indifferent on Randy Orton. I don't dislike Randy Orton. I don't really like him. I'm just kind of happy that he was the guy who won it instead of Roman. Um, coming up next year, I guess we're going to get to see him versus Bray Wyatt. That's about the only thing that truly makes any sense. And I was discussing this with uh, this guy, Jeff, who I talk wrestling with a lot at work. Shout out to Jeff Hickox, always talking pro wrestling with me. Um, but yeah, I had said, you know, Randy Orton kind of did the whole slow burn thing. You know, there's no more Eric Rowan tied into the Wyatt family. 
Now Luke Harper's gone, so who are the final two, the final two members left? Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt. So Randy is responsible for completely ridding the WWE of the Wyatt family. They'll be completely dissolved, and he'll win the title in the process. So he gets it, you know, his he gets his cake and gets to eat it too, I guess. But like, I have no clues of where the hell they're going with this thing with Goldberg and Brock Lesnar. I just can't figure that out. You know, we've seen time and time again Goldberg cannot work. Um, he can't even get a damn promo straight. You know, he had but the wall or the door, or whatever it was, had blood dripping out his face and. You know, after about three attempts, he still couldn't get the promo right, and they rushed him in out there to try to save the segment. Turned on the crowd, told the crowd that they helped screw him up. I'm just like, dude, you're a face. You don't do that. You know, so, yeah. You know, even Kofi Kingston's escape, you know, like where he escapes from being eliminated. Trans I mean, yeah, man. he held himself on the post, but I thought that was lame. I actually prefer the flashier stuff, like where he walked on his hands or, the, you know, he jumped from the announce table back onto the apron, so... Yeah, the, the actual rumble itself, I I thought was pretty uh, pretty much a letdown, you know. But Cena and um and AJ that definitely delivered. Reigns versus um Owens delivered, and I thought the cruiserweight match was pretty decent. The women's match was a bit disappointment too, because I actually have had some encounters with Bailey um, from my time from when I wrestled out there in any circuit. I was really rooting for her, but I guess it kind of made sense for uh, for Charlotte to hold on to the title for a bit, so that way the title doesn't continue to ping pong back and forth between the the women over there on Raw, you know. That's true. And I saw a while ago, see, it's January. I saw this back about the beginning of December and of November, where it says Randy Orton was going to win. And I was like, oh, it's just a rumor. And after it happens, like, well, maybe they're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that was a rumor I heard maybe within about the past two weeks. That he was going to win. I just said, is the WWE really going to run with this as the main event or the big match at WrestleMania? It just doesn't really seem to have that big draw feel to it. I don't know if it's really going to draw a whole lot of fans to, uh, is it Orlando where it's taking place this year? I think so. That's where WrestleMania 33 is taking place, right? I don't really know if it's going to draw a whole lot of viewers, you know, because Randy Orton hasn't been, you know, at the top of the, the main event in so long. And I mean, Bray just really has not gotten you know like a consistent push he um he constantly gets jobbed out you know on pay-per-views and stuff like that so it's just like yeah this whole thing just kind of almost came out of nowhere just like one of randy orton's rkos right <laughs> would it be good is you know there's a rumor of randy orton taking on way riot way Wyatt, and um wouldn't it be cool if randy orton loses and he puts way over you know what? It, that would be interesting. That would be interesting. So you're basically, from what you just said, just to um, to reiterate, so Bray Wyatt would actually go on to win at WrestleMania against Orton, and he would retain the title, assuming yeah. that he wins it at Elimination Chamber. That would be interesting. It truly would. And I would it would be one of the biggest uh, victories of Bray Wyatt's career. It truly would be. You know, but it kind of kills, you know, um, the purpose of having Randy win the, the Rumble. <laughs> yeah, but you know, Randy wants to match the record, so that's why he's going to win the belt. He, he wants to match Cena and Ric Flair. Then mm -hmm. Triple H is going out, and that's another stupid thing. And why is it, I really don't have any interest seeing Triple H and Steph Rollins. The whole Goldberg thing is ridiculous. The guy can't even wrestle. No. I'm like, you can't. If you can't wrestle, don't be in the ring. And the whole thing, how they're giving him the puss and whatever, that's exactly what they should have done with Sting. This is how, and I like your opinion after this, this is how I would have booked Sting. Sting shows up, Survivor Series, screws Triple H, disappears, mm -hmm. shows up at the Rumble, number 30, wins, disappears, comes back, wins at WrestleMania, has the belt until August, loses it, tries to get it back, loses mm -hmm. at the Rumble, disappear, and then he's inducted into the Hall of Fame. Or at least come back as far as second WrestleMania and have it as a retiring match. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the WWE really, I hate what they did with Sting. You know, Sting, i probably say if I had to come up with a top five list, of my favorite wrestlers of all time, he's right up there in the top three. And I almost prefer that he would have been that one guy who would have held out 
and would have never made the move to the WWE and would have ended his career, you know, just getting um, inducted into the TNA Hall of Fame and, you know, and being the icon that he was in W or excuse me, in WCW. Because once he came over to WWE, it was all about one thing, man. You seen that there? It was all about the money. You know, to see him come in and job to uh, that to the Triple H in that overbooked crappy match that they had at WrestleMania from about like a year or so ago. Um, you know, it was basically come in, do the job to Triple H, get inducted into the Hall of Fame. You know, and then he had the match with Rollins, but he wound up getting injured. You know, whatnot. Yes. I'm pretty positive at this point his career is effectively ended because basically the way it goes. If you're inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame, you basically are inactive. Yeah. And then with the injury on top of that. But my dream match that I truly wanted to see that never happened, and I really, you know, it, it just absolutely sucks. I wanted to see Sting versus Taker. This is a match that should have happened. You know, I think I want to go back to maybe around WrestleMania 27 or so, the one that had um, Miz taking on John Cena for the title when they were out there in Atlanta, I believe it was, at the Georgia Dome. There was a rumor when they kept on showing that promo of a guy wearing a long black trench coat walking through that desolate building. That was supposed to have been Sting. Yep. And we were supposed to get Sting way back then, but things didn't work out. The money wasn't right. You know, they couldn't negotiate a contract. And the guy who was walking through that desolate building on that promo wearing the long black trench coat turned out to be, of course, The Undertaker, who wound up having that match against um, one of the series of matches they had against Triple H. So, no, I am absolutely just, like, disappointed and let down with how the way, he, the way he was treated, the way he was booked and everything. But, like I said, I think the payday, the payday left Sting with a, with a big smile with that black makeup that he has with the white makeup. Big smile on his face, man, because he got cashed out for, uh, for laying down for, for uh, Triple H there. Well, yeah. wrap, wrapping up the talk show, the one thing I do want to say is it was a real honor privilege to have you on the show. Thanks, Keith. You know, as we're talking about wrestling, and this is our wrestling segment of the show, every episode mm -hmm. is different. You know, I Steph Rollins and Roman Reigns need finishers, and Steph Rollins, what he in the retired Sting because he injured Sting, mm -hmm. then he fought Finn Balor, and he broke Finn Balor's arm, mm -hmm. and it's like. Why you want someone in the ring if he can't freaking wrestle and he keeps hurting people? And, and now he's fighting Triple H, and it's like, what is this the battle of the? I bet you anything, and they were, someone will call it the battle of the pedigrees. Who has the better pedigree? So I'm rolling Triple H. I'm like, Triple H isn't that old, and you're doing that, and it's, it's just ridiculous. I, I'm so sick of wrestling, but you know I have a learning disability. But I promise uh -huh. you, I can do a better job than what they're doing. I'm not doubting it for a second, Keith. I'm not doubting it for one second. And it's ironic because we do a portion of our show called Yay or Nay. Um, I'm an employee of ESPN, and I'm quite sure you've heard of the show First Take, which has uh, Molly and Max and uh, Stephen A., where they embrace the bait and they go back and forth on topics. So we have a similar concept, and one of the topics that actually came up was Seth Rollins. More so than anything else, Seth Rollins' uh, usage of that running powerbomb move, yeah. which he has executed on a number of people, and he's actually injured a few people in the process. And the question was, what's more dangerous, Seth Rollins or that move? And I actually brought up the point that D'Lo Brown actually used a very similar uh, version of that move when he injured um, Dross and pretty much put him in a wheelchair and paralyzed him for the rest of his life. So I think it's more of a commentary on the move because when he was utilizing the, the curb stomp, I believe is what it was called, yeah. like early on, like when he first came out of the shield as a heel and everything, who got hurt from that? Yet they, they banned the damn move. So, so many things that WWE does just absolutely does not make sense. Like watching this UK tournament that they did about maybe two weeks ago, I see a guy, I think his name was Grabwell, Sam Grabwell, the guy with the shaved head from out there in Blackpool, jumps from off the top rope and does that damn diving headbutt, which has screwed up so many people. You know, it led to uh, Chris Benoit's brain damage. It led to um, Dynamite Kid's injuries. It led to um, Daniel Bryan getting hurt. Yet they continue to pe let people use that. I really don't know, man. I have no clue. I don't even think we have enough time here on this talk show to try to figure out what the hell some of those people who do these uh, make these decisions at WWE are thinking, man. 
It's not the same wrestling as it used to be. No. Because no, Eric Bischoff would have never copied, you know, Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon it might have or might have not copied Eric Bischoff. But Eric Bischoff always constantly, I would love to have Eric Bischoff on the show. You know, hey, I, I, I dislike ECW. I, I didn't, to me, ECW wasn't real wrestling. It was backyard wrestling. Oh, you didn't like ECW? I didn't care for it. Okay. I mean, you're entitled to your opinion. I, on the other hand, I'm a huge proponent of ECW. ECW is the reason why a lot of things that we see over there in WWE are happening right now, like putting people through tables. Yeah. That came from over there in ECW. All the chants, all the sign usage in the crowd and stuff like that. Um, you know, during the Attitude Era, you know, especially the, the profanity lace prom promos and some of the more riskier attire that the female wrestlers wore and whatnot, that all came from ECW. And if you watch, um, do you ever watch Lucha Underground on El Rey Network? Not really. It's awesome. It is probably the best wrestling product, I'd say, next to Ring of Honor out there right now. And a lot of what they're doing was very similar to old school ECW, like when Paul Heyman used to run things, not before this watered down crap that we got from the uh, the WWE through Vince McMahon. But no, I I honestly said what wrestling goes through cycles. And what we're seeing now is Ring of Honor is basically what ECW was back then. They're feeding Vince McMahon and Triple H all this talent. Because they're not able to develop the um, the talent, you know, from within the performance center in WWE developmental. All the big talents now that are coming to um, to WWE are coming mostly from ROH and then from the Indies and from Japan. I mean, like if you look at NXT. It's almost like watching an, an episode of Ring of Honor from a couple years ago, seeing Chris Hero there and, like, Rod, Roger Strong, you know, and, of course, the guys like Daniel Bryan and Seth, you know, who have came up to the main rosters, guys like uh, Cesaro, you know. Now I think there's a few more heading over. I heard Kyle O'Reilly's going to be heading over there. I think um, Adam Cole as well, possibly that guy Ray Rowe from, uh, from War Machine, I think is heading over. So, yeah. All right. Well, wrapping up. You know, I always end my show on this. Going on the record, when I first approached you, well, actually, he, I didn't approach you. You approached me. So when mm -hmm. you came across, actually, this would be very interesting. You know, uh, when you came across my show, what was your honest opinion, and how did that come about? Um, I saw the title belt in your um, your channel art. On your YouTube channel, I said, this guy's into wrestling. I'm, I'm interested in talking to him. That's pretty much it right there, brother. <laughs> I saw that you had about 300-some episodes. I said, so he's committed to this thing, just like how myself and my uh, my buddy Dell and uh, Craig are. You know, we hope that we can get that um, that far into this thing, man. And, you know, like I said, we're about 52 episodes in, so we got, we're got we about 250 episodes behind you there, Keith. You know, so I saw the dedication. I saw a wrestling fan. That's all I saw, man. I saw you were from out here in the Northeast. You know, whatnot. So I just figured it was another person who I could talk to about wrestling and network with and um, connect with and stuff. You know, I only watched like maybe a little bit of one of your episodes and I saw um, you were talking to a female guest. I'm not, I can't even quite remember what the subject matter was about. It definitely wasn't about wrestling, but I was just like, yeah, I said, I should, I should reach out to this guy and see if we can work something out to where we could um, sit down and have a conversation. No, absolutely. You're more involved than me, a guest on the show once again, and we can do a follow up. And if you're cool. interested, maybe you would like to interview me. Yes, yes. I mean, because um, I didn't really get to ask you much in terms of your background as to how you became a wrestling fan and how you made some of the connections that you have in the business. So, yeah, I'm definitely, definitely interested in having that conversation with you. Yeah, definitely. We can talk off the air about that. But cool. wrapping up our segment, it was a real honor and privilege to have you as a guest. Hey, the pleasure is all mine, man. It's been great uh, having this conversation with you, Keith. Thanks for having us on and giving us the opportunity to promote the No Gimmicks podcast on your on your network. No, absolutely. That's all. That's what I'm about, giving people opportunities. Cool, man. Very cool. Keep on doing what you're doing, Keith.